Welcome back to Parts Random. In today's episode, I want to talk about a new toy I bought. It's the Genmitsu 3018 Pro desktop CNC machine, which I got off of Amazon. I'll leave a link below on where you can find it. The machine comes unassembled, so you need to assemble it yourself. The one caveat I would say is when you put it together is to make sure you tighten everything down. It's fairly straightforward in terms of putting it together, but I forgot to to clamp down the stepper motor which ended up making it shake and made this uh, set screw fall out and I lost it. it. Seems to work with only the one set screw in there. I'll have to get another one to replace it. So I've had the machine a few days and mostly just cut wood on it. Cut a piece of plywood and I was frankly pretty disappointed with the results. It, you know, a lot of bits fly off and you know, so the the words and I'll put a close-up shot up here on the corner so you can see it did not come out very well. I also tried it on a piece of basswood which I used for whittling. That too did not come out very well. I finally went and bought some harder wood. This is a piece of oak. Uh, oak definitely works a lot nicer and I've also ordered new bits. The bits that came with it are only single fluted. You probably want to at least get double or four flute uh, bits. I think there's probably a fair amount you can do with adjusting the spindle speed and the traversal speed to make it cut at higher speed, but sl you know, slower movement. The company that sells this, Sansmart, gives you software for sending G-code to the device does not have any really good modeling software in it. So if you're going to hand edit all the G code, that would probably be impractical. I found the better solution is to actually go and get uh, Autodesk Fusion, which is for hobbyists is free. It's a pretty complicated and very deep program for doing some things. It's pretty straightforward what you need to do. And it's super powerful. Why don't we um, jump into Autodesk Fusion and we'll see what we can cut using it. Okay, so now I've opened Autodesk Fusion. In design mode, I'm going to create a new sketch. Pick the XY plane for the sketch. Say create a piece of text and the piece of text will say subscribe. And we'll make it 35 millimeters tall. center it on the page because that's roughly where the center of the block we're going to be carving into will be. Now I want to go to the front face and type E for extrude and I'm going to extrude it by minus three millimeters. So at this point now I have my text and it's slightly below the plane which is what we want to carve out. I'm going to leave design mode, go into manufacture mode, look at the top view, and I want, let's do a 2D contour, so click on that. Now I need to select my tool to use, so I'm going to go up here, click on icon. Now looking at the documentation on my tool, I see that the cutting bit is 3.175 millimeters. It is a flat end mill. The overall length of the cutting tool is 38 and a half millimeters. 38 and a half. All right, so now we got our cutting tool. Click OK. Go into geometry, and now we want to select our contours. So we're just going to go through and click on each letter, including the interior contours. All right, and now we'll click done. And now that's what it'll carve out. I right clicked on 2D contour. And I will now select DRBL. Click post. Then the NC file you want to write to. Now I had to open the editor because in a second you'll see that some of this G code is not correct. So now I'm going to open GRBL control which came with the CNC machine and now open the file I just wrote out. And that's what it's going to carve out. So now the first thing I want to do though, is I want to make sure that I'm going to spin up the drive and make sure it's 
centered roughly in the block of wood. And I put the drill bit down to where it's just touching the surface. So now we're ready to go and then we say send and it's going to fail because it doesn't know what these codes are. So I found in general that you you can just kind of get away with going back into the text editor and deleting them and resave the file. So now I'll reload the file with that code deleted and then try to send again. And off it goes. As you can see, I kind of misgaged how far it would cut, and so I ended up going off the block of wood. Also, the quality, it's not fantastic, and certainly on woods with more grain in them, where the grain it's easier to split the wood along the grain, it's going to be far worse than some harder wood. But even with this hard oak, it's not fantastic. But, you know, for a cheap desktop CNC machine, I'm not sure you can really expect much more if you really want good quality. I think you got to go to a much higher end machine. But for a hobbyist, this is a great machine so far. Hope you found this useful and talk to you later.